Hello everyone, my name is Cynthia Niles and I'm going to discuss with you the cardiovascular changes um, within the elderly population. This is going to be a very quick presentation discussing four major points. Um, the first point will consist of the actual changes within the cardiovascular system. Secondly, we'll discuss the assessment processes and the changes that we'll see in the elderly population. Thirdly, we'll discuss the specific and commonly occurring pathophysiology processes. And lastly, we'll discuss five major educational points. Starting with the anatomy of the heart. Um, now you know that our heart actually contains different heart valves. Um, and the, the purpose of the heart valves is to prevent the blood from backflowing up into the, um, from the ventricle into the atrium. Now, as we age, the actual valves itself begin to harden and stiffen. And whenever it stiffens, um, the more likelihood of regurgitating, reg regurgitation of blood is more likely to occur. Stenosis also occurs with this. The conduction system tends to decline due to the development of fibrotic tissue. This tends to disrupt, disrupt, excuse me, the electrical conduction of the SA node, which is the natural pacemaker of the heart, leading to a decrease in heart rate. Also, the heart pumps less effectively as we age, such as a decrease in the cardiac output, stroke volume, and contractility of the heart. This causes the heart to work harder to adequately pump blood to the rest of the organs. This tends to only be problematic when added stress on our body is experienced or occurs. Um, for an example, it can be either emotional stress, illness, or a direct injury to our body. Physical exertion and certain medications can also cause the heart to work harder. If this is not corrected, a decrease in organ perfusion is most likely to result causing dizziness, confusion, oliguria, and other symptoms specific to the organ not adequately perfused. Feral receptors also become less sensitive to the changes in our blood pressure, or excuse me, to the changes in the blood pressure during positional changes. Now due to this occurrence, orthostatic hypotension is more, most likely to occur as we age. Blood vessels and its structures also begin to change over time, causing many problems to occur. The endothelium layer begins to thicken, which changes the vessel's ability to constrict and dilate as needed. These changes can result in a constant constriction of the blood vessels, further leading to a higher blood pressure. Within the inner layer of the vessel, the, the elasticity decreases, resulting in the decrease in blood circulation, which can lead to an inadequate supply to various organs within our body. <clears throat> this also causes an increase in blood flow resistance, leading to higher blood pressure. Also, the valves within the veins begin to weaken, causing edema and blood clots to occur also. And lastly, regarding the blood volume, it also decreases with age. And because of this, in response to stress, red blood cell production also declines. Overall, white blood cells remain consistent. However, neutrophils tend to decline with age. Now let us discuss the cardiovascular assessment changes in the elderly population. Starting with the vital signs, Orthostatic hypotension is most likely to occur due to the insensitivity of the barrel receptors we discussed earlier. You'll also see a decrease in the heart rate um, due to the disruption of the conduction system of the heart that we've also uh, mentioned earlier as well. Blood pressure, particularly the systolic blood pressure, tends to elevate as we age due to the increase in the vascular resistance increased heart workload and the changes within the vasculature. Two very important lab results that we would like to make sure that we are paying attention to um, would definitely be the troponin levels um, in the elderly population. Now the troponin levels 
um, will evaluate or will let us know if there has been any type of damage to the heart. Also, although the GFR um, rate had, and BUN and creatinine have nothing to do with the heart, um, kidney function tends to decrease with age. So it is imperative that we make sure that the kidneys are being adequately perfused. Now, if we have a heart that's overworking itself, then chances are other organs are not being adequately perfused. So it's very, very imperative that we keep our eyes set on that GFR rate as well, the kidney function. During auscultating the um, heart, it is very common in an elderly patient to hear a heart murmur. Now this can be due to the heart valve stiffening over time like we discussed earlier. Now during auscultation, as far as our auscultating the heart, it is very common in an elderly patient to hear a heart, a heart murmur due to the heart valve stiffening over time. I've also included the skin assessment here as well, um, just more so thinking about the, the uh, capillary refill being greater than 2% or perhaps the skin temperature um, being uh, cool and clammy. Um, this kind of, these signs are indicative of um, a decreased perfusion somewhere. So that's very important, along with pale and um, clammy skin as well. Um, also, I've also included uh, varicose veins here. Um, and that's due to the weakening of the valves. This can increase the risk of uh, strokes due to blood clots as well as aneurysms. Regarding the specific and commonly occurring pathophysiology processes, it is important to note that the cardiovascular disease, uh, I'm sorry, that cardiovascular disease develops uh, due to the normal age-related changes as well as other risk factors. So combining these two increases a person's chance in developing a cardiovascular event of some kind. Atherosclerosis and hypertension is a commonly occurrence in the elderly population. Hypertension is an increase in the blood pressure due to many different factors, such as, you know, perhaps maybe poor diet choices, uh, uh, perhaps living a sedentary lifestyle, stress, or other underlying causes. Hypertension tends to go unnoticed for quite some time um, due to the fact that it is typically asymptomatic. Usually people realize that they have uncontrolled hypertension when um, a, an organ of some kind um, has been affected. Atherosclerosis, on the other hand, develops due uh, over time, excuse me, develops over time due to an accumulation of fats, cholesterols, and other substances, substances in and around the arterial walls. This can cause a narrowing of the arteries or a complete blockage, resulting in ischemia, uh, embolisms of some sort. Both conditions can lead to heart disease, such as coronary artery disease and heart failure. Regarding the five educational points, the one main and most important factor the last point I would like to talk to you all about are um, basically just educational points, and there are five of them. The very first point is to pretty much to, um, if you happen to smoke or an elderly patient happens to smoke, advise them to stop smoking because smoking uh, basically damages your vessels within your body, and that can lead to many different problems, including aneurysms. Hypertension and diabetes management is also key um, if, that's, if these elderly patients actually do have that because um, if you're not careful and you allow these conditions to just be uncontrolled, then um, the patient can also develop, um, you know, what we talked about earlier, heart failure, coronary artery disease. Physical activity should also be a part of the everyday lifestyle in order to increase the circulation of your blood flow. 
There is also evidence that the physical activity um, reduces emotional stress as well. Angina or chest pain occurs when there is like a uh, sudden complete blockage of oxygen within the heart muscle. Now this can actually last for a few seconds or up to 10 minutes. And if this is if it lasts longer than 10 minutes, then the patient needs to go and get help right away because this is an actual heart attack and myocardial infarction. If the patient is seen gripping their chest and complaining of crushing chest pain or radiation um, or pain radiating uh, down their shoulder, um, perhaps jaw pain, then this also signifies a myocardial infarction. Lastly, Proper nutrition is key. Um, there is a diet out there referred to as the DASH diet. And this consists of um, meals based on low sodium, low cholesterol, and low uh, saturated fat, which is key. We want to instruct our patients to uh, have a diet low in sodium to prevent any type of hypertensive related conditions. And also um, low cholesterol and low saturated fat um, due to possibly preventing uh, plaque buildup within the artery. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to my presentation. You all have a wonderful day.